Hey, this is Leighton from Just Collect. Thanks for tuning in to our channel today. I hope you enjoy the content you're about to see on yet another amazing vintage collection. So this family had contacted our company, Just Collect, cards that went back all the way to the early 1900s, such as T206s, T205s, T207s, and Gaudis from the 30s, all the way up to the 1970s. There was a particularly small group of cards in the collection which had piqued our interest. And that group of cards was Cracker Jack cards, specifically 19 of them, from 1914 and 1915, the only two years that Cracker Jack made baseball cards back then. They are full of some beautiful red, deep backgrounds, and they are extremely difficult to find in any condition. But the card that really revved our engines, that got us excited to potentially go up to Massachusetts, was the Shoeless Joe Jackson 1915 Cracker Jack card. For those of you that are not familiar with the two different years, the big distinction in 1914 is you could only get the 1914 Cracker Jack baseball cards, yep, that's right, out of those Cracker Jack candy packages. In 1915, you could get them in Cracker Jacks, but you could also send away for it with what I believe to be 25 cents and maybe some coupons, and you could have got the whole set. In either case, they're both highly desirable series of cards. Once we got some images of the Cracker Jack cards and some of the other cards from the collection, we believe that they were real. We then did an evaluation for the family. They explained that there was a lot more vintage cards behind that. And I asked if they could give me some specifics. And they said that there was an entire metal filing cabinet full of them. And normally I would ask for more detail, but I'll tell you, when someone contacts us here at Just Collect with some Cracker Jack cards, and in particular, one of the most coveted cards in the entire hobby, the Shula Show Jackson, as long as I knew we had a chance to get it, I was gonna be the one personally to go. So we made an appointment, I went up there, and what seemed to be a very unassuming home that there would never be highly valuable vintage sports card collection in it. It was just very unassuming. So I walk in, I'm like, oh, I really hope they have what they said. And you know, I got those butterflies in my stomach going, where on the one hand I was excited, on the other hand I'm like, oh, did I just do a drive for four hours and change for no reason? I guess we'll find out. And the family greets me. They show me the big steel, you know, metal, humongous filing cabinet. And I start pulling on a few drawers. Are these all full? They're like, yes. And they said, if you'd like, you can even take the filing cabinet with you if we reach a deal. And I said, oh, is this all part of the collection? And they said happily, yes, cheerfully, yes. So folks, there's thousands of vintage cards. I mean, there's a 56 Tops baseball set. There's a 69 top set. There's a 70 top set. There's hundreds of Gaudis. There's hundreds of T206s. There's T207s, T205s. My mind is just going a million miles a minute. And so what I do to try to settle the family down, because they're looking at my car, like they're going out the front door. They're like, you think you're gonna fit everything in the car if we reach a deal? I said, I'm gonna be able to fit most of it. And so I start going through everything. You know, where's the Cracker Jacks? Thankfully, I pull out one of the very first drawers from the filing cabinet, they knew where they were. I identify the Cracker Jacks are real. Moments after arriving, I find the group of 19, and they're not just real, but they're fantastic. They're not in mint condition, but I do my evaluation, and I'm super excited because we're off to a great start, because they're worth a lot of money. And that meant to the family that we were going to agree to that portion of the deal. But of course, they wanted to sell everything else. So they asked me, what's next? I said, I gotta start doing my homework as they explain to the family and anyone else who deals with us here at Just Collect. I have a two-step process in terms of figuring out what I think an item, a card, a collection is worth. And then, of course, I will try to make the highest offer possible so that I can have the ability to buy your collection, of course, sell it afterwards, make a fair profit and talk about it, not just here on YouTube, on our videos, but also on our blog at blog.justcollect.com. When he realized that I was being very thorough he wasn't disappointed, but he suggested, you know, maybe when you, you're done with the evaluation, 
you know, you go back, maybe get some dinner for yourself, because you can't go straight through. And if it's okay with you, you can come back in the morning. And when you're talking about buying collections that are tens of thousands of dollars, you want to make sure, of course, that you're treating the people that own the cards fairly, but you also want to make sure that you're valuing everything properly and you don't get, you know, kind of like too excited and overinflate the values just because you're super pumped about finding Shoeless Joe Jackson Cracker Jack card. Or for that matter, I pull out like the third drawer. I'm like, get out of here. Guys, is everything all right? I'm like, you have an E95 Honus Wagner in there. He's like, yeah, you know, I thought we had some other good stuff. I'm like, but you didn't mention it to me on the phone. Well, I didn't tell you everything that we had. So I explained to him, this is why I need to go through the collection and be thorough. And then I go back the next morning. We already have the time and place to go back to his home. He says sometime between 10 and 11. We go through everything or so I thought. He pulls out a few more boxes and I could tell it's kind of like when the teacher's looking at you and you have to finish your test by a certain time. Even though he didn't tell me I had to be done by a certain time, he's looking at me as I'm going through the few extra boxes. I'm like, did you have a question about one of the boxes? Because I didn't know if you thought there was maybe something super valuable. He goes, no, I just wanted to know, you know, do you think you'll be done, you know, like in the next little bit? It'll take you all day. I said, oh, are you guys growing tired of me? Have you ever seen the movie, What About Bob? He laughed. And I said, don't worry, I assure you, I'll be done shortly. And then asked if I could have everyone's attention because there were a few folks there from the family. And we went through my evaluation of the cards. They asked a few particular questions on some of the cards, including the Shoeless Joe. I showed them my spreadsheet. I went over what I thought it was worth in totality. I explained to them what I could pay for the collection. And lo and behold, we reached a deal. Then not even a moment after we shook hands, did they say to me, are you going to be able to take everything with you? I said, I'm going to try. Of course, what I didn't realize is how long the packing process would take. I would estimate I was packing up, meaning physically removing the cards from the metal steel filing cabinet, organizing. Oh, by the way, they, they were, there was, we were short boxes. So I should have not only taken the bigger vehicle, I take like one or two plastic bins, I needed nine of them. I take one or two cardboard boxes, I needed 16 of them. I took card savers, I needed more. I mean, this family was great. They're helping me get different containers and boxes. We didn't fit everything. But to show you how tight it was, some of the items I left behind were some vintage cards, some modern. Well, I have someone in the office today that was looking at some cards. So I say to the gang before today's video, hey, can you do me a favor? Set up my buddy Joe with the light. They're like, Layton, you brought the extra light to the deal in Massachusetts recently. I'm like, oh my God, I did. That's how tight it was when I left. And in a nutshell, very appreciative to not only of course bought the collection, but to spend a few days with these folks, these folks with the salt of the earth. One of the gentlemen there served our country proudly and my brother-in-law serves our country proudly. Currently, anyone watching this video, if you serve our country proudly, let me know in the comments below, DM me. I'll make sure that if you are interested in vintage cards, I'll always try to bend over backwards and give deals. Do you want me to send a care package out there to where you're serving? We'll do that for you as well. Thank you very much to each of you and all of you that watch. And if there's a particular part of the collection or when we do future collection videos that you'd like to see, let us know and we'll be happy to accommodate.